Hi everybody. So in today's video, we're going to be um, finishing up the notes that are in your packet on pages 11 and 12. So the idea is that we're going to put everything together that we've been learning throughout this unit about analyzing a graph using its derivatives. So I'm going to give you an equation or in the following problem, I'm going to give you a graph of the derivative, and I'm going to ask you to find everything, critical points, increasing, decreasing, points of inflection, concave up, and concave down. So let's start with the first step. Your first step whenever you're doing these problems is going to be to find the first derivative. So in this case, your first derivative would be negative 3x squared plus 6x. And you're going to take that derivative, you're going to make it equal to 0. Now, in order to solve this equation, what we would need to do is factor. So I'm going to factor out a negative 3x, which means I get x minus 2 left on the inside of the parentheses. Now I'm going to create two separate answers using these two separate equations. Negative 3x equals 0 gives me the answer 0. And x minus 2 equals 0 gives me the answer 2. So my critical points would be 0 and 2. Step number 2 in this problem is always going to be to find the second derivative. So your second derivative here is going to be the derivative of this equation, which gives me negative 6x plus 6. Now just like before, once we have the derivative, we're going to make it equal to 0. And I'm going to solve this by factoring. So I'm going to factor out a negative 6, and on the inside of the parentheses, I have x minus 1. Now in this problem, negative 6 is never equal to 0. So that doesn't give us any solutions. But x minus 1 equals 0 gives us the answer 1. Now I'm not going to list x equals 1 as a point of inflection because the big difference here between critical points and points of inflection is that a point of inflection is a place where the concavity actually changes. So x equals 1 is a possible point of inflection, but we don't know for sure until we actually look at the sign changes by making a table. Now, incidentally, that is our third step. The third step here is going to be to make a table. Now we're going to take the values that we got here, the 0 and the 2, and we're going to take the value we got here, and we're going to turn this into a table. So if I put those values in order, 0 would go first, 1 would go second, and 2 would go third. Now the beginning and the end of my table will be negative infinity and positive infinity. Each of these values becomes a dividing line in the table. And I'm going to make this table have two rows, not just one. The reason I'm making this table have two rows is that I'm going to use the first row to write down information about the first derivative. And I'm going to use the second row to write down information about the second derivative. Now, in order to figure out this information, I'm going to choose numbers from within each of these intervals. So a number between negative infinity and 0 would be like negative 1. If I take a negative 1 and I plug it into the derivative here, I get a positive times a negative, which is negative. Now, that tells me that the original function was going downhill because a negative first derivative means my function is decreasing. If I pick a number in between 0 and 1, like 1 half, and I plug that in, I get a negative times a negative, which makes a positive. So that tells me that the original function here was going uphill. In between 1 and 2, like for example 1.5, if I plug that in, I get a negative and a negative, which makes us, neg which makes us positive. So we stay positive. Our sign does not change there. And if I pick a number bigger than 2, like for example 3, a negative times a positive makes a negative, so my original function was going downhill. Now if you imagine kind of connecting these arrows, you can kind of visualize the original graph. It went downhill, uphill, uphill some more, and then downhill again. Now for the second derivative, I'm going to take those same numbers, only I'm going to plug that into the second derivative here instead of the first derivative. So negative 1 plugged in here gives me a negative times a negative, which makes a positive. 
Now, unlike drawing an uphill arrow, the second derivative tells us about concavity. So that would be a graph that is concave up like a cup. In between here, like the 1 half, I'm going to get a negative and a negative, which still makes a positive, so the sign does not change. 1.5 gives me a negative and a positive, which makes this negative. And if I plug in 3, I get a negative and a positive, which makes it stay negative. Now, based on this table, I can tell that the number 1 really is a point of inflection because that really is a spot where the concavity changes in the table here. If I wanted to list now increasing versus decreasing, increasing is going to be places where the slope is positive. So that would be this interval in the middle of the graph from 0 to 2. You'll notice I'm using closed brackets here. Decreasing would be the interval at the beginning and the end where the graph is going downhill. Now you'll notice that at the 0, and at the 2, I'm still using closed brackets. The only time I'm going to use open brackets for increasing and decreasing is if it's an infinity. Now, if we're talking about concavity, we're looking at the second derivative. So I'm going to be focused on the second row of the table here. I'm going to be concave up from negative infinity to 1. And you'll notice that here I'm always using open parentheses. And I'm going to be concave down from 1 to infinity. Now let's take a look at how we would analyze this same information, only instead of giving you an equation, I would give you the graph of f prime. So use this problem says use the graph of f prime to identify all of the same information we just talked about. So let's talk about first critical points. Critical points are places where f prime is equal to 0. So what we're looking for here are the x-intercepts. So that would be x equals negative 4, 0, and 4. Increasing would be places where the original function was going uphill. So f prime is greater than or equal to 0. On the graph of f prime, this is where the graph is above the x-axis. So that would be this section of the graph here and this middle section of the graph here. To list these intervals, I would say negative infinity to negative 4, closed bracket, and I would say 0 to 4 with closed brackets. Decreasing is going to be the places where the first derivative is less than or equal to 0, which is going to be where this graph is below the x-axis. So that would be this middle section of the graph here and this section at the end of the graph here. So decreasing would be from negative 4 to 0 and from 4 to infinity. Now for the next three questions, we're really focused on the second derivative. So let's talk about points of inflection. Your points of inflection are going to be places where the second derivative changes signs. Now the second derivative is the slope of f prime. So we're looking for where the slope of this graph changes signs. That's going to be at the maximums and the minimums. So the points of inflection here would be at negative 2 and positive 2. Now, your original function is going to be concave up when the second derivative is greater than or equal or greater than 0. So we're looking for where the second derivative is greater than 0. In other words, where this graph has a positive slope. That's going to be this middle section of the graph here. So I would say from negative 2 to 2 is where this graph has a positive slope. Last but not least, we're going to be looking for concave down. Now concave down is where the second derivative is less than 0. In other words, this graph has a negative slope. So that's going to be this section of the graph and this section of the graph which is negative infinity to negative 2, 
and 2 to infinity. All right, I hope you guys are staying safe at home, and I am thank you so much for watching the video, and I will um, see you soon. Bye.